Hello and welcome to this video on factor models with two indicators. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm a statistical consultant and instructor with QuantFish. And on this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to a multivariate statistical methods such as structural equation models, factor models, multi-level models, and latent class models. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly stats newsletter. In this video, I want to talk about factor models with two indicators. Questions that I often get from people who run confirmatory factor analysis or structural equation models is uh, that they uh, wonder about models where they have just two indicators per factor. And so there are many rumors out there about all the things that could go wrong with factor models when you have just two indicators. And so some people will flat out say, you can't do a factor model with two indicators because it's not identified. And that is something that you should never do. You should always have at least three indicators. So in this video, I want to shed a little bit of light on this issue of factor models with two indicators. Do they work? When do they work? When do they not work? So that um, you can be a little bit more confident when you run your confirmatory factor models and you maybe only have two indicators for a latent variable. So here you can see an example in M+. Plus. This is the M plus diagram option that you can use to build a model in M plus or to view a path diagram for a model that you ran via the syntax. And this is a two factor model. Each factor here has two indicators and the factors are correlated. So you can see I have indicators MRT1 and MRT2. Those are two um, test halves from uh, mental rotations test is a test for measuring spatial abilities. And then the other factor has two indicators called math one and math two. Those are the sub scores from a math test. And so now the question is, does a model like this work or when does it work? So let's take a look at the M plus output for this model and scroll down here. So this is the um, output that was generated for this exact model. You can see there's a warning about missing cases. So there are some uh, variables that have or some cases that have missing values on all variables on all four variables and those can be included. But that's not a message about the model per se. It just simply means that some of the cases here couldn't be included in the analysis. We have 552 cases that were included in this analysis. And when we scroll down a little bit more, we can see that the model estimation terminated normally. So there's no error message, no warning message about under identification or any kind of problem. And so when we scroll down too, we can see the model has 13 parameters. We have uh, 14 pieces of information with four variables, namely four variances, four means, and six covariances. So we have one degree of freedom. So this model is actually over identified with one degree of freedom. And you can see that from the chi square test of model fit, one degree of freedom. And you can see the value here, the test, the value of the test statistic is. 0.516 and that's not statistically significant. So this model fits the data well. So it's over identified, it fits well, there's no estimation problem, no improper solution, no identification problem, no convergence problem, nothing. So you can see a two factor model with two indicators each can work perfectly fine. It can fit well. When we go down, look at the parameter estimates, everything looks just fine. We get loading estimates, we get reasonable standard errors for the loading estimates, we get a factor covariance and other parameter estimates, factor variances, and they all look reasonable and their standard errors look reasonable. The standardized solution looks reasonable. We get standardized factor loadings that are fairly sizable. We get a factor correlation estimate of 0.338. So that's how the math factor and the mental rotations factor are correlated. That's also plausible. And um, we can look at the R squared for the observed variables. And so those are not extremely high, meaning those indicators are not, not particularly reliable, but 
they're not improper either. So there's nothing here, no negative residual variances or any parameter estimates that would make us feel like this model wasn't working. So it is working. A factor model with two indicators can work. Now let's look at another example, um, one where this doesn't work. So here this is the same model fit to a different data set. And so let's run this model here as well. Exact same two-factor model with two indicators. And here you can see it still says the model estimation terminated normally, but then we get a warning message here that says the residual covariance matrix theta is not positive definite. This could indicate a negative variance, residual variance for an observed variable, a correlation greater or equal to one between two observed variables or a linear dependency among two observed variables. Check the results section for more information. Problem involving variable MRT1. So let's take a look at this model also. And here you can see that in this model here, we still get a chi-square. Chi-square looks okay. And when we go down to the output, we see there's something that does not look okay. So here you can see we get a very small loading now for the same variable that we used in the previous model, a high standard error, and then a very large looking loading for the second indicator of the second factor, an extremely large standard error here, which looks completely crazy, you could say. And also we can see that we have some abnormal variance estimates for the factors with abnormally high standard errors for both of them. We have a negative residual variance for the first indicator of the first factor and for the second indicator of the second factor. Those are negative variance estimates which are impossible. So those are improper solutions or Haywood cases. And also the standard errors here are extremely large. So you can see this model, same model, failed. And this is clearly a sign of model under-identification, empirical under-identification. How did this happen? Why did this happen that we get these abnormal estimates? You can also see the standardized loadings are um, out of bounds here, 1.87 and so on, negative residual variances. So this is all, this is a big mess. And so how did this happen? To understand this, let's take a look at the correlation matrix or in this case, it's the covariance matrix here that was analyzed. And so in the covariance matrix, you can see that the covariances that are related to the between indicator correlation, so meaning between constructs, between the MRT indicators and the math indicators, those correlations are very, very small in this example. So this is a fabricated example where I manipulated those between construct correlations to where they would be close to zero. And so in a two factor model with two indicators and correlated factors, this model becomes under identified empirically if the factors are not substantially correlated. So that's basically destroys, so to say, this model because part of the identification here uh, rests on the uh, correlation between the factors. So only if both factors are substantially correlated with some other factor or variable in the model, will the model be identifiable? And that is the reason, perhaps the most important reason why so many people discourage models with just two indicators. Because when you have just two indicators for a factor, then identification is not per se insured for that factor. It rests on there being a substantial correlation of that factor with another variable. And it doesn't have to be another factor. It could be an observed variable that is correlated with a factor in the model, but you have to have a substantial correlation. Otherwise, that model is not identified, at least not with free loadings. So this is 
probably the reason why people say, oh, you should have at least three indicators. Because if you have three indicators for a factor and they all have substantial loadings, if meaning if the if variables within that factor are substantially correlated with one another, then the factor will be identified regardless of whether it is correlated with something else in the model. In the first model that we looked at, everything was fine because our correlation between the two factors was substantial. And so again, we looked at this here in the standardized solution, the correlation between factors, the latent correlation was 0.338 and that was statistically significant and that helped us with identification. So that was the reason why this model worked just fine because the factors were substantially correlated. We can see that from the correlation matrix in the descriptive statistics here. You can see that even though those correlations between factors, so between MRT and math variables, even though these four correlations here were not super high, they were only between point 19 and 0.223, so around 0.2, but that was enough. So that was enough because at the latent level, the correlation is stronger, it's corrected for measurement error, and so therefore that is enough to identify this model. But when these correlations here are close to zero, these four correlations that are high highlighted here, then it becomes problematic. So then this model becomes empirically under-identified. Another issue with models with just two indicators is that they tend to be a little bit more prone to improper solutions than models that have more indicators per factor. And so that's another reason why we might prefer models with three or more indicators because they don't show that kind of issue. Now, in summary, could you use a model with just two indicators? Yes, you can. And sometimes we have no choice because we don't have more than two indicators. Maybe there are only two items for a construct in a study. And then you can be fine as long as you ensure that the factor that is measured by only two items is substantially correlated with at least one other variable in the model. If that is not the case, you still it's still not the end of the world because what you can also do is, if it's reasonable, you can introduce the assumption of essential tau equivalence in your measurement model. So you can fix both of the loadings to one, and I wanna show you this in this model that was unidentified in this input file where we use the data set with um, uncorrelated or nearly uncorrelated variables across factors. So if you assume that the var variables are essentially tau equivalent, then that means they have the same loadings. And that might make sense if you have, for example, two item parcels or two test halves that are measured on a similar scale with similar units of measurement. In this case, for example, the two MRT the mental rotations test halves both consist of 12 items. The items are very similar, so the units of measurement of these two subscales should be the same. There's really no reason why they should have different loadings. And the same is true for the math test scores as well. So they could very well be essentially tau equivalent. And so we can introduce this assumption and then that ensures identification because a one factor model with two indicators is already identified when you have the same loadings. So with the loadings constrained equal across the two indicators, um, the model will be identified, even if it's just one factor, no other variable, and you have only two indicators. And so here in M plus, the first loading is automatically fixed by default. So therefore I don't have to put an at one here, but I do have to put it behind the second variable because that loading by default is freely estimated. So let's take a look at this also and see if that works for this data set where previously this model was under identified empirically. So let's check this out as well. And you can see the model estimation terminated normally and chi-square looks great. So 1.25, three degrees of freedom, p-value is 0.74. So this model is a very good fit. It's not fabricated data except for the between construct correlations, but the indicator covariances are real data and the variances. And so you can see that that can fit very well when the assumption of essential tau equivalence is reasonable. And so you can see here that 
even though the covariance between the two factors is close to zero, 0.061 and not significant, and the correlation makes this clearer, the correlation in the standardized solution is actually only 0.019 and not statistically significant. So um, this shows you the factors are not correlated and the model is still identified with two indicators because now the unstandardized loadings are both fixed, are all fixed to one, making the assumption of essential tau equivalence. And it's a reasonable assumption here. The chi-square test does not reject this assumption because it's not significant. So the model is not rejected. Equal loadings, that assumption is not rejected. And so then you have an identified model. So that is also something that can help you when you have only two indicators. Then you can think about that and can think about whether it makes sense to assume essential tau equivalence, equal loadings, and then this factor will be identified no matter whether, whether the factor is correlated with something or not. And then maybe the last resort, if you can't make that assumption, is to use a single indicator and not use a latent variable. That's of course, that's not I ideal because then you don't correct for measurement error in the same way. But if you have two indicators or two items and they're not essentially tau equivalent and, and uh, you don't have more than that, then maybe use those in the aggregate. So form a sum score or average score of those two indicators and use um, the, av the aggregate score as a manifest variable in your model, kind of like in a path model or something like that. That's not ideal, like I said, but it is still better than throwing your data away or not using the variables at all. So that would be a resort. Also, sometimes people use single indicator data in an SEM. So that is something that you can also consider as you can have a single indicator for a latent variable in that situation the loading of that single indicator has to be fixed to one and the error variance also has to be fixed to a reasonable value that reflects that indicator's reliability. Some people say validity in measuring that latent variable and that's sometimes difficult to figure out, but um, maybe from prior research, you have an, an estimate of the error variance and reliability and then you can fix the loading and error variance and have a single indicator for a latent variable and in principle that can work also. So you can see that factor models with two indicators are not the end of the world, no reason to panic. You can um, do a lot with just two indicators, just don't be afraid and try it out. Take a careful look at your output. Are you getting any warning messages? Are you getting any abnormal parameter estimates? Are you getting abnormally high standard errors? Those are all warning signs in which case you should reconsider your model and see if you can make it um, more stable. But in principle, it is fine to use factors with just two indicators. If there's no other option, then this is not something that you should um, shy away from. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to check out the description for additional resources. Leave a comment in the comment section and I'll see you next time.